What's up guys, Justin here from Poorly Reviewed Beer. This is the 50th video for the Poorly Reviewed Beer YouTube channel, and for that bit of a milestone I wanted to do something special. Now if you saw the very first video I did back in February, uh, you know that I did a side-by-side -side of Ballast Point's Sculpin and Grapefruit Sculpin IPAs. It's a comparing and contrasting of the two beers. Uh, for this 50th video I wanted to do uh, something special, take it up a notch a little bit, and so from Ballast Point Brewing Company in San Diego, California, this is Sculpin IPA and Grapefruit Sculpin IPA and Pineapple Sculpin IPA and Habanero Sculpin IPA. Um, I'm sure I'll be using the, the standard Sculpin as a base, but um, for comparing and contrasting the, uh, the other three varietals, but I'm uh, very excited to get into this. So we will start out with the, the Sculpin IPA. It's a little bit of a small glass, but I uh, got a good amount of head in there so far. Maybe have an ounce or so left in the in the bottle. That's what two and a half to three fingers worth of head. I'll probably get the rest in now. Um, in addition to the big head, a good amount of carbonation shooting up through the glass uh, pretty well see-through a nice uh, kind of gold color yeah goldish orange highlights as I uh, hold it up to the light and again pretty well see-through now while the uh, head's still settling down on that beard a little bit uh, just some notes from the brewery and I'm only going to read from the the base sculpin not from uh, the, the other three varietals um, they all re they all read fairly similarly, except for with the grapefruit, pineapple, and habanero. It's talking about those specific flavors. But in terms of the uh, the base Sculpin IPA, a trophy beer that's a testament to our home brew roots. Our Sculpin IPA is a great example of what got us into brewing in the first place. After years of experimenting, we knew hopping an ale at five separate stages would produce something special. The result ended up, ended up being this gold medal winning IPA, whose inspired use of hops creates sense of apricot, peach, mango, and lemon flavors, but still packs a bit of a sting, just like a sculpin fish. All right, most of the head's pretty well settled down now. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Yeah, a whole lot of a uh, citrusy hop bite. Pretty smooth overall. Yeah, in spite of all that carbonation, it's a pretty smooth drinking experience. Um, kind of a bit of an orange candy taste to me. So definitely getting the definitely getting the citrusy hop notes. Um, Again, most, mostly orange to me. Maybe a head of pine in there as well. Um, just really a tasty, tasty IPA. Hint of sweetness, as I said, orange candy. So I'm getting a hint of sweetness. I'm trying to figure out where that's coming from exactly. Maybe a little bit in the malt. But um, just a really, really great IPA. Um, I don't think it's any big secret. I've talked, I've had this beer on multiple occasions. Talked about it, I believe, on multiple occasions. Um, just a terrific beer. All right, gonna keep some of that for reference. We're gonna move on to the grapefruit sculpin. Again, pretty good amount of carbonation. Admittedly, I kind of slowed the uh, 
slowed the pour just a little bit midway through. Still ended up with a good, uh, about two fingers worth of head. Again, see-through, lots of uh, bubbles shooting up from carbonation. Pulled it up, similar color, as you would uh, pretty well expect. Let's give it a try. Hmm. Almost sweeter than the, the base sculpin. Um, citrusy in a different way. The grapefruit has a, a very, very different citrus feel than what I get in the sculpin. It's most definitely citrus, but the, the grapefruit really comes through in a different way taste-wise. Of course, it has a different fruit than um, than what I get in the sculpin. Again, that was kind of orange candy. This is really just straightforward grapefruit. I'm not really getting much of the pines. Getting a still getting a moderate hop bite. I did get a moderate hop bite out of that sculpin, and still getting that bite in this. But um, maybe just a hint. Um, it's pretty much well dominated by by uh, by citrusy 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 hop notes. And just kind of one thing on on the sweetness. It's Almost more natural. I talked about orange candy on the uh, on the sculpin, and I would definitely call this a little bit sweeter. But it seems like a more natural sweetness, um, for, again, presumably from the the added fruit used in this beer. Um, also, very just really tasty. Uh, great stuff. Pretty similar in terms of uh, smoothness and mouthfeel. Um, as you would expect. All right, cleared out the palate a little bit. So ready to try the pineapple sculpin. Again, slowed up my pour just a hint to get that in. A uh, good solid two fingers of head out on there, I would say. It's maybe a little bit lighter in color. Kind of getting more towards the... Still plenty of gold, golden notes, but I'm getting more towards a, a yellow than an orange, especially as I hold it up to the light. Um, it's kind of lighter yellow highlights around the edges. Um, then, so grab one of the other ones here. Yeah, just as I'm looking at the pineapple, um, the grapefruit, just the outside the highlights are a little bit deeper in color than when I look at the pineapple, um, the, yeah, the pineapple sculpting. Let's give it a try. I just uh, took a fresh taste of the base sculpting to kind of reset my palate. And here we go. Again, kind of going back to the artificially sweet uh, note initially. Um, the tropical notes, tropical fruit notes, are brought out a lot more, a whole lot less citrus compared to either of the two beers we tried before. Yeah, not even the pineapple per se. I can kind of get it as a. Not necessarily as a flavor, but a bit of a, a feeling. I'm kind of tasting like the, not the, the, the tasty fruit part, but the kind of almost waxy, I don't quite know what to call it, the, the, the end. If you're eating like cubed uh, canned pineapple or diced canned pineapple, there's the kind of the end, stem-like end, if you will, that's almost waxy. That's a little tougher. I'm kind of tasting that more than actual pineapple fruit. But the mango, I feel it comes out a lot more. Um, I would say even the peach as well. So uh, much more tropical than the than the other the other two beers that were much more citrusy. Hmm. Probably my least favorite of, of the the three. So far, it's still very good. Uh, certainly, none of these beers are bad by any stretch, but. 
I think right now, at least until I get to the habanero, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, I definitely like the the base sculpin and the the grapefruit sculpin a little bit more than this uh, pineapple sculpin. Maybe not quite as smooth, but that could just be uh, some minor variation and from batch to batch. It's not not so extreme that it's not concerning or anything, but it is just a little bit different in terms of mouthfeel and how it drinks compared to the others. All right, that was the pineapple. Now the habanero. I think we said all we need to say about the look, at least in terms of carbonation. It seems to be a lot more actually in this one, but could just be me. Maybe more, a lot more partic some particulate matter in there as well. I'll hold that up to the light. Yeah, definitely particulate matter. I'm wondering if that's uh, guessing that's from the peppers. Uh, I still have a little bit in here, and it's we're looking at about. Two fingers ahead in this one. Yeah, lot, lots of lots of uh, material sitting in there in the in the beer. Uh, still very clear overall. I would just say it's kind of a little bit more of an even color than the others, though a little bit lighter. Not quite as deep of a gold color as the others have been. <coughs> Gonna take a sip of the regular sculpin. And try this habanero. Hmm. Hmm. Definitely pepper, a uh, significant pepper kick hanging on my tongue as I uh, as I finish the drinking experience. Everything else was a little bit uh, a little bit muted. Let me try again. Um, really just pepper dominated. Um, kind of the, the hot bite gets blended in with the, uh, the bite of the pepper. Um, I'm really just kind of getting like kind of green, fresh, I hesitate to use vegetal, but kind of that, that, that fresh, fresh vegetable feeling, um, or flavor from, uh, from this beer. And that's really kind of the out, outstanding, uh, flavor. At least to this point, the uh, the pepper flavor, habanero flavor, is very significant, but it's not burning. I have have a little bit of a burn in the on my tongue, in the back of my throat, but nothing nothing too painful yet. Though I've only had a couple ounces, maybe, of uh, this beer. Um, but dare I say, easily my least favorite. I'm not necessarily big on chili or pepper beers in general. Maybe a little bit of a uh, pine hop note, but uh, and I'm just now that I'm getting used to the pepper, I'm just now starting to get uh, a slight hint of a little bit of a tropical fruit note. But otherwise, it's pretty well uh, pepper dominated, I would say. Um, and that's just not my thing, and that's okay. Uh, again, nothing terrific beer, just not one I really uh, would enjoy that much. And now it's really starting to hang around the the pepper flavor, so that's really uh, uh, not not a big one for me. If I had to rank them in order, probably uh, worst, my least favorite to my best favorite or most favorite. Uh, I would say the habanero is probably my least favorite, followed by the uh, the pineapple, then the base sculpin, and probably the one I liked best was this uh, grapefruit. I uh, just like that it was a little bit more 
a natural sweetness tasting to me. And a little bit more, uh, just a little, little bit different in terms of the, uh, the citrus profile. A very different, different from what you get in IPs in general. Normally, uh, grapefruit is in a, a big IPA flavor, unless it's specifically in the beer. If you're getting citrus hops, usually it's an, an orange lemon flavor profile that you're getting uh, from those hops. So the grapefruit sculpin is just a little bit uh, something different. So that was my side-by-side, by-side-by-side uh, sculpin tasting. So um, I'm not going to get super sentimental in this video. The official one-year anniversary of PRB is coming up in just a, a couple weeks. But thank you to all everyone who's viewed um, all 50 of these videos. And to uh, my fellow YouTubers that have been so supportive, especially in the last few months, especially. Um, as I've gotten to interact and network with some of these guys, they've been uh, great support. Of course, uh, to my family, friends who've been checking out the, the site in these videos. Uh, thank you so much. You can find all of our reviews, video and written, along with news, commentary, and lots more at poorlyreviewedbeer.com. Also check out PRB on Twitter and Facebook. All those links are in this, the description below. Also, if you are so inclined, please like this video and subscribe to this YouTube channel. That's it for this edition of Poorly Reviewed Beer, the 50th edition of Poorly Reviewed Beer. See you next time.